Okay, you guys asked me to cover this. I already talked about it with my partner yesterday, which is kind of funny. Here we go. I was telling my spouse, I'm going to go to Costco. And what she said was that Kiwis are on sale. And I said, okay. Now, I need y'all to tell, tell me if I'm wrong if I don't buy Kiwis. So, man was heading to Costco. His wife said, hey, Kiwis are in sale. He didn't buy her Kiwis. Is he in the wrong? Chat, you better answer correctly. Was he in the wrong? I asked my partner, and as much as I feel connected to the woman that I married, okay, my partner answered in the correct way, of course, because he's a very considerate person. You buy the Kiwis. My partner and I agreed. You buy the Kiwis. Because unless he's the only one in the house who eats the Kiwis, then she's obviously saying it for herself. So buy her the Kiwis. Because it's like, why else would she tell you? That they're on sale. Like, is she a random autist that's just like, hey, Kiwis are on sale today. And that doesn't mean anything. Because obviously, that means something. She's not just saying it for fun facts. Kiwis are on sale today. Fun fact. Within the context of I'm going to Costco, hey, Kiwis are on sale. Right? Like, see, I know enough social expectation. I know socially the expectation is, well, if this isn't for me, it's for you. So you're telling me to get Kiwis. Now, if I wanted to clarify, I'd be like, are you asking me to get you Kiwis? Or are you just letting me know they're on sale? Because otherwise, like, why would she just bring it up randomly? Now, even if you're the person who's like, well, they were just randomly telling me for a fact. Why would your partner randomly tell you that? Because I would say, oh, why did you say that out loud? Like, if my partner says something and it doesn't match anything he said before, or if it doesn't make sense within the context, I'll say, why did you say that? Because I don't know why you're saying it. Like, my partner and I, there has to be a reason we're saying stuff. So I'll say, why are you saying, like, why are you talking right now? Because if you're talking, you either want my attention, you need me to listen, or like, you're just talking to talk because you have ADHD and you're just ranting at me. But like, why are you, why is your mouth moving? And why am I hearing sounds? So if my partner said, like, if I said, hey, I'm going to the store and he's like, Coke's on sale. I'm like, okay, you want me to get you Coke? Like, I would just ask like, oh, do you want me to get you Coke? Or I would assume, or actually I would just get it for him because I know he likes Coke. You know, I just get things anyways. So it's interesting that in this situation, it even had to become an issue in the first place because he used none of that opportunity to even possibly think about why she was saying it out loud. I think that's the issue. The issue isn't that he didn't think much about it because what if he does have a partner who just randomly says things? Like she she just randomly says things, then that would make sense. But he didn't even stop and think, why is, why is she saying this out loud? Like, why are you even opening your mouth right now? People don't just open their mouths for fun. They're usually communicating something. So what is she trying to communicate to me? Yes, Stephanie, great question. Does he not, does he just not know his wife? Maybe that's it. Maybe he just doesn't have that kind of like conversation under understanding with her comment section says the divorce came out of nowhere in quotations it's like yeah like I think people really are like this divorce came out of nowhere but then they don't talk about it you got to talk about it you got to have the conversation you got to say this is my communication style I'm communicating something to you you know what I'm saying like there has to be some sort of communication if you're if your brain is like oh I wouldn't have picked up on that I wouldn't have known she was saying something what do you think she is saying? Because I understand that your brain isn't picking up on it, but what is your brain picking up on? So if you're like, oh, she's just, why would she say that out loud? Like, I just want to know what is happening in your brain. If somebody goes, well, if you go, hey, I'm going to the store, she goes, Kiwis are on sale. What do you think is happening in that social moment? In my mind, she's telling me it's on sale and I stopped thinking about it. But why do you think she's telling you that? Like, do you think about why someone says something or do you just think like, okay, sounds came out of their mouth and that's it. Like my brain always asks, why did you do that? And not in an accusatory way and like, a, I need clarification. Sounds came out of their mouth and that's it. Okay, now I would communicate this to a partner. I would tell a partner, hey, uh, unless you tell me a direct thing, I'm just gonna assume it sounds out of your mouth, which is interesting, right? Which could be very, just how your brain works, which is valid. But that's the thing is like, this is why communication is so difficult because you also have to have comprehension. Communication is paired with comprehension. So if your partner is communicating, but you're not comprehending, then the communication is not working. And this is why I say know yourself well enough to tell your partner this ahead of time, because otherwise you're gonna look like you're neglectful you're gonna look like you're weaponizing competence. And he's double downing on it, which I think is the bullshit thing. For him to be like, tell me if I'm wrong. You're wrong in the sense that you didn't consider your partner. Like you didn't have this tool in your, like you have to consider your partner. Like when I think about my partner, when I'm shopping, even if my partner hasn't said he wants something, I get him his favorite snacks. I get him his favorite drinks. 
When he goes to the store, even if I haven't asked for it, he buys me my favorite things. He knows I like kiwis, so he'll get me a kiwi. He knows I like certain kinds of milk. He'll get me my favorite milk. He knows I like certain things. He'll be like, I bought you strawberries. I know you like strawberries. Like, it's about thinking about and thinking ahead if you want to be married till you're 99, okay? If you want to love your partner and not just to stay married, but because you actually care about that person. Maybe it's that. I actually just care about this person. And so I'm thinking about them, but not always. Sometimes I come home from the store and I don't bring him a favorite snack. And it's like, oh, it's like, oh, damn, I didn't write it on my list. So I forgot. I do have to write it down, to be fair. I don't remember in the store unless I write it down, even for stuff I want. Like, even if I want something, I have to write it down. Because if I don't write it down, I'll forget to take it. So to be fair, you also have to know your brain. If you're the kind, if your brain is your brain, learn your brain enough to communicate it to your partner and vice versa. I think ultimately this is a great example of an opportunity to learn, but it is one of those things where if he doubles down and he blames her for not communicating, I think that's like inconsiderate and unnecessary. Maybe says I would get it, but the indirectness would drive me crazy. But wait, saying Kiwis are on sale is so direct to my brain. It's not the most direct, but it is so direct because in my brain, there's no reason to bring it up. There's just no reason to bring it up. You want me to get kiwis. She mentioned kiwis. You're going to the store. The social context is so fucking clear to my brain. If it's not direct enough for some of you, that's valid. Of course, obviously it wasn't direct enough for him. I love that about brains though, you know, because I think what's important here is that it's an opportunity to grow, not an opportunity to cause issues though. Based off this comment section, girl, people are like, divorce him, divorce him, divorce him. I would say that this is an opportunity to grow from it. And if they're not going to grow past this, then it eventually will lead to like a divorce because it's about learning. It's about learning how the other person operates and communicates. What about people that are nonverbal? Doesn't your partner ever just do something? Like I can tell what my partner needs by their body language a lot of the time. Like I can tell if my partner, like my partner does this thing even with me where I'll say like, oh, can you get me this thing? And I'm like, no, 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 don't get it. Don't get it for me. Ah, oh, but I kind of want it. No, don't get me this thing kind of want it. And then they're like, how about I buy it? And then we can put it in the cabinet. And then if you want it later, you can eat it. And if you don't want it, I'll eat it. And I'm like, okay. It's like, or even like, there's just like, you can tell, like sometimes I can tell or like, I'll just, I don't know. I, it doesn't matter. The point is it's all an opportunity to communicate. Okay. It is all an opportunity to communicate instead of pointing fingers. I think the issue is like, I don't need to point fingers in this situation, but my partner and I did answer the same that we both feel like if our partner brought it up, we would conclude that we needed to buy Kiwis because our brain doesn't find a logical reason for them to bring it up otherwise. So that's what matters is that you're on the same page with the person you're with. I was telling my spouse, I'm gonna go to Costco. And what she said was that Kiwis are on sale. And I said, okay. Now, I need y'all to tell, tell me if I'm wrong if I don't buy Kiwis. Julie is not. Yes, I'm wrong. <laughs> you're not just wrong because you didn't buy kiwis. You're wrong because you didn't qualify that statement with clarity. Look, and by you telling me that this is on sale, would you like? Because she's at fault too. Oh, would that's you the like point. some? She's at fault. And so here's. No, I don't like that. Either they're not at fault, or both, or nobody's at fault, or. I don't like the fault thing. The thing I did buy golden key. I did buy the kiwis because what before I left. Oh, the house. We're, we're standing there in the kitchen. She's like, "Hey, kiwis are on sale." And I said to her, "What you mean to say is, can you buy kiwis?" And she's like, "Well, yeah." And I was like, well, "Why you gotta have that energy with her?" Yeah, why do you gotta have that energy with her, bro? No, because and what no. you could have said is, no. "Would you like me to get some?" Or yeah, like how they, many would you like? I would love to get you some. How many would you like? Well, they're in a box. Be work. kind to your spouse. Hey, look, don't be coming at me. I don't like that. See, that's what I'm saying. I don't like the energy of like, I don't, I'm not mean to my partner. I'm very nice to my partner. Like, this is mean. Me with this bad, I, 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 and I thought, I'm telling this story on the podcast. That's bad communication right there. It Kiwis is. are on sale. Yeah, on your part. On both parts. <laughs> <clears throat> both y'all. Both y'all. See, for me and my partner, she perfectly communicated. Hey, Kiwis are in sale. But see, that's our brains. So it's like a brain problem. But the fact that he tried to correct her, even though he knew what she was saying. So she, he knew. It wasn't a mystery to him. He knew what she was communicating. Right? 
So that's the worst part. Like, you don't need her to communicate differently. You know what she meant. So now he's mad because, like, he's correcting her grammar? What's happening? Both of them. Both, um, I was telling my spouse, I'm going to go to college. Yeah, that's the problem. I don't like it. It's like he's correcting her grammar. Like, I don't need that. My, I know what my partner means to say. That's all I care about. Right? Like, that's all I care about. I don't think it's bad communication if you could comprehend what she was saying. Bad communication is a bad comprehension. Like, if you knew exactly what she was saying, then what's the issue? What's the issue? Nah, 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 nah. Nah, nah, nah. Maiden says he can't communicate how his brain works and how she can help him out but by how by how she communicates with him. Yeah, but like, what's the reason he needs this correction if he could understand her? You know what I mean? Like, what's the reason he needs to correct her if he can understand what she means? Is he saying, hey, in the future, I'd like a partner who speaks in full sentences? Is that what he's saying? Hey, baby, I'd really like it if you spoke in a full English sentence with proper grammar. Is that what he needs? Why does he need that? What's the purpose of it? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you already knew she wanted the Kiwis, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the reason? Because, like, I couldn't imagine needing, if I can understand my partner. No, no, no. Because it's annoying his brain, which is valid in my opinion. It's not valid that it annoys your brain. Because what if it's for the wrong reason? It's not, the validity doesn't come from the fact that it upsets him. The validity comes from the reason it upsets him. The reason it's fair for autistic brains to feel upset is because you have autism. That's the reasoning. But does he have autism? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it can't just annoy you because you've decided it annoys you. You have to have a reason. Like, if my partner was just like, I think it's better if people talk in full sentences, well, you should have married somebody else. Do you know what I'm saying? The reason a neurodivergent brain it, it's not, you know what I'm saying? Like, wouldn't you want to not have it? Like, that's what I'm saying. That, no, I feel like, at least in my belief system in life, if something annoys you, you have to figure out if it's valid. Otherwise, get rid of it. It's, oh, it's bad. Like, having something in your life that keeps you from functioning, get rid of it. If you can't get rid of it, learn to, like, live within it. So, like, this feels like this is a trap. He should get rid of this thing unless he's got a reason he has it. Like that's why autism is the disability because if you can't get rid of it, then that's because of your autism, which is debilitating in some regards because you can't get rid of it. That's the point. It feels silly for him to have this issue and not think about it, right? You can't just think yourself out of sensory issues. I'm not saying that though. I'm saying, do you have sensory issues? Or are you pretending to have them because you want to be in control? Do you have sensory issues? Does he have an issue? Or is he trying to be in control? That's the difference. Are you actually neurodivergent? Or are you trying to be a control freak? Are you manipulative? Or are you actually having a communication problem? Are you disabled? Or are you pretending because you want an excuse? I'm saying, why does he need this thing? Instead of assuming it's because he has an issue, I want to know what it is. I want to know what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah, the way he reprimanded her didn't sound like sensory issues. It sounded like control issues. So I want to know, is it control issues? Or is it something else? Because that's why I say categorization is so important. Understanding what something is, is so important. You know, <laughs> he's just being an ass from what I can tell. Or is he just being an ass? So like, that's always the question. I think that's why it's so important to figure out, okay, are you being an asshole or do you have a reason? That's why people think people with autism are assholes because otherwise, why are you doing this? It is not okay to do certain things you do when you have autism, but it's okay because you have autism, right? That's why we, we give people exceptions for context. Oh, I'm doing this because of this reason. Like I'm breaking down in this restaurant and crying because I can't, like you, you allow people an, an, a deep understanding based off the context. Because otherwise, if you're doing it, you're just an asshole. It's rude. Like, it sucks. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we, like, oh, why did you do this? Let's see, Chet says, I see what you mean, but I think we're a bunch of neurodivergent people. We are projecting and don't want to assume the worst of him. At least that's what I'm doing. Speak for myself. Well, yeah, of course we want to be thoughtful and think that maybe he has a good reasoning. 
But I think that's why I'm glad I looked up the full context as well, or at least the full that they posted on their own TikTok. And this is from That Show You Feel. If you guys are interested, I'll link the TikTok so you guys can check him out more. But the idea is like, is he just trying to get one up on his partner? Or is he genuinely trying to have like better communication with her? Now, let's see this. Let's go to the chat on their video. Why do you have that energy with her? Exactly. I don't even think it was bad communication because he knew exactly what she meant. He just wanted to correct her. Could she have spoken more precisely? Yes, but considering he immediately berated her, he absolutely knew what she meant, so she communicated fine. Be kind to your spouse. He doesn't like his wife. The proper response was, how many do you want? She's at fault too. She was at fault. This is not what he said, but interesting that that's what he heard. I didn't see the divorce coming will be the next episode. Good on these men holding him accountable. Perfect example of him being incompetent on purpose. He just don't. He just wants her to be wrong. I'm going to Costco. Kiwis are on sale. Cool, I'll grab some. But instead, he picked up a podcast mic. It's insane that someone else has to tell you, be kind to your spouse. She's literally yours. It's not bad communication if you understood what she was trying to say, but chose to misunderstand and try to blame her. Question, if you're in the bathroom and you yell out or text her that you're out of toilet paper, do you expect her to bring you more? Oh, uh, 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 Exactly, bitch. Exactly, bitch. You in middle of taking a shit. You run out of toilet paper. You text your spouse. I'm out of toilet paper and I'm on the toilet. What do you think they should do? Answer correctly. What do you think they should do? Okay. Yes. Exactly, bitch. Come on. If you can't figure that out, you better not procreate. Because you dumb as fuck. Okay. Jesus Christ. Come on. You better have a disability that makes it so you don't know what the fuck the next move is, bro. You better know what the next move is, bro. Wild, bro. Wild. Beautiful. A fucking yes comment section. I'm glad I read that, bro. That's it. That's what I'm saying. Come on. Reliability. You have to be reliable to your partner. You must be reliable within reason. I'm not reliable with all things. That's why I never overpromise. I never overpromise. I'm reliable. I can bring in an income, girl. I can clean a house. I can take care of a cat. I can do a lot of things, but I'm not always reliable with all things. If you need me to fix your broken computer, I am not reliable. But my partner is reliable for me. If my part, my computer is broken, he's reliable, but not in reverse, girl. So it's about playing to your strengths. Okay. What are you, how are you going to like signal reliability to your partner? Are you reliable enough to communicate with me in a peaceful way? Instead, he blames. So just Okay, let's just go back to that energy again, just right now. Costco. And what she said was that Kiwis are on sale. And I said, okay. Now, mm -hmm. I need y'all to tell, tell me if I'm wrong if I don't buy Kiwis. <laughs> Julia's not, yes, I'm wrong. <laughs> You're not just wrong because you didn't buy Kiwis. You're wrong because you didn't qualify that statement with clarity. Look, and by you telling me that this is on sale, would you like? Because she's at fault too. Oh, would that's you the like point. some? She's at fault. And so here's the thing: I did buy golden key. I did buy the kiwis because what before I left the house, we're, we're standing there in the kitchen. She's like, "Hey, kiwis are on sale." And I said to her, "What you mean to say is, can you buy kiwis?" And she's like, "Well, yeah." And I was like, well, "Why you got to have the energy with her?" No, because and what no. you could have said is, no. "Would you like me to get some?" Or yeah, like how they, many would you like? I would love to get you some. How many would you like? Well, they're in a box. Be what? kind to your spouse. Hey, look. Uh, wait, hold on. Look, don't be coming at me with this bad. I, I, I and I thought. I'm telling this story on the podcast. That's bad communication right there. It Kiwis is. are on sale. Yeah, on your part. On both parts. <laughs> <clears throat> both, y'all. Both. Mm -mm. Okay. This man would be floored when my partner is at the store or if I'm at the store, we don't even ask. We just send each other items. When my partner goes to the store, I just write apple, send. Orange juice, send. Hmm. Is my partner an idiot or does he realize I'm at the motherfucking store? And if my wife sends me a Apple text, hmm, what could she be texting me? Maybe she's texting me, uh, what's that white lady's name? Her child's name is Apple. Maybe I'm just writing him randomly like, oh, you know that Apple kid? <laughs> like, no, I don't have to preface it. I'll have to say, babe, can you get me an Apple? I just write Apple, send. He goes, oh, she wants an Apple because I didn't marry a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? Okay. 
I can't, I didn't marry an idiot. Okay. I married someone who's like, oh yeah, I can understand context clues. Now, to be fair, if my partner had a unique brain and it wasn't about being stupid, but about being different, like neurodivergently different, then my partner would have told me, hey babe, if you just text me like Apple, I'm not going to get it. I'd be like, oh, okay, no problem. Can you buy me an Apple? I don't mind working around my partner's uniqueness. But I swear to God, if he knows what I'm asking him and then goes, I know you wanted an apple, but because you didn't say it in a full sentence, no apple. I, okay, I, that's divorce. I know what you wanted me to get, but because you didn't say it the way that I think is proper grand girl, I, divorce. You want to talk about couples who give up too easily? Divorce, Okay. I wouldn't have married that person anyways. That person got, mm -mm, no, ma'am, absolutely not, okay? So again, <laughs> communication, comprehension. We wanna be on a team. We want the, we wanna honor the uniqueness of our partners and the things they struggle with. Like I never look at my partner and think, why can't you do things other people can do? I just say, hey, what are you capable of doing? And then he looks at me and he never says, well, other people can do things, Brittany. Why can't you? He says, hey, what can you do today? We play to each other's strengths. Now it helps that we don't take advantage of each other. It helps that we don't lie to each other. It helps that we're both rooting for each other to win. It helps that we actually like each other and we love each other. And it helps that we want to be in this marriage and we want to be in this marriage until one of us dies. So to be fair, we are fully invested in making each other's life better. And when you're fully invested in making someone's life better, you learn the uniqueness of how they communicate and you do your best with it. And that includes if someone's bothered with how you communicate, that person goes, I love you so much. Is it okay if when you're communicating with me, we kind of do it this way? Because when you say it this way, it really like it confuses me and it kind of makes me feel bad. And then, it, you know, I just feel like stunted and I don't know what to do in that moment. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, we just communicate it. We just say, hey, I love you so much. And like, look, when we go to the store, so there, here's something that's like a really good example. If my partner and I have decided we are going to the store and it's going to be a quick store run, we're only getting these items. When I'm at the store and if I want to get more items than we negotiated and I know we're on a time limit, I'll say, why don't you go home? I have keys. I can walk home alone, but I want to stay and get more stuff. I don't say, will you stay with me? Because there's a transition that's happening there that his brain didn't prepare for, that my brain decided it's ready for. I don't, we, we have a new, we have this way of saying, actually, I want to stay longer at the store. Do you mind staying longer? Or, hey, and you know, last time I did this, he was like, oh, I can stay with you. Actually, I have enough spoons to stay a little longer. And I was like, great. And so we just stayed at the store a little longer, but I don't mind if he goes ahead of me or if I go after him or ahead of him. Like the idea is that we try not to, because we're both bad at transitions, we try not to change too much on each other because I, I don't mean to do this, but sometimes, you know, you get like an extra spoon at the store and you're like, actually, I kind of want to shop for like 15 minutes longer. 15 minutes is a long time to stay at a store. So I try to allow him an ability to move around my change, but I also try to, or I'll walk you home and I'll come back to the store because the store, there's a stores everywhere here. You know, you're always a, a block away from a bakery in Croatia, let me tell you. So I was like, let me just walk you home and I can come back. But like, sometimes if we change plans on each other, it feels really painful. Like, oh, oh, but we planned for this and now you're saying let's do this and I I'm not ready to make that transition. You know, and sometimes we both make a huge change and we're like, you want to go for a walk to the beach? And we're like, whoa, look at us making a huge change in our schedule. And sometimes we just do it. It's the idea is that we know we're the funny little couple. So we're going to be funny together and we're going to laugh about it, but we're also going to make each other feel really good about being okay with boundaries. It is absolutely okay for you not to go to the store with me if you're not feeling up to it, I can go or vice versa. Like, I really can't go outside. I can't be seen today. Can you please go do it? Thank you so much. And like, it's like, yes. Okay. It's like the idea is that you want to give your partner a feeling of safety and gratitude for doing the things you know that are hard for them. Even if the rest of the world is saying like, oh, it's so hard for your partner to do this. Like my partner is so easy for them. That's great, bitch. I didn't marry your partner. I married mine. Okay. And same. Like I, you know, I'm a, I'm like every other YouTuber. We're very big and bossy on this microphone, but in real life, we get anxious talking to the clerk at the grocery store. 
It's very anxiety inducing. Okay. You're big and strong in front of a microphone. Guys, there's no one in front of me. You must understand. I'm not looking at another person, but then when you're in the store and you're looking at another person, you're like, oh my God, it's a whole ass human being with a whole life in front of me. (sighs) Am I pulling out my debit card fast enough to pay for groceries? Anyways. All right. All right. All right. Oh, thank you. Maiden says the respect. Oh no. Maiden says, I love the way you talk about your relationship. Gives me hope. The respect for the respect for exactly how you show up for each other. Thank you. That's our goal. I mean, to be fair, I think we both aged into this person that could be there for each other because our life gave us plenty of examples of, you know, how we didn't like to be treated or how we maybe could have been better partners, you know? Yeah. It is kind of amazing. I really do appreciate the way that he shows up for me and I really try to show up for him. And I think together we make a pretty damn good team, you know? Um, okay. With that said, I think this is a good place to leave it. Good conversation. I'm glad we had it. I'm always here for communication and comprehension, but man, when you don't understand what your partner is saying, it can feel very scary. So make sure you are comprehending. My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth Life is a fool. Dun, dun, dun.